Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us today for Oak Ridge Student Ministries Youth Lesson. Uh, today, we are finishing up, we're wrapping up week four of our FAM series, and we've been looking at how family affects the way we see the world around us, the way we see our faith, the way that our faith and our family interact. And last week, we talked about change. And that there's a lot of things that we just expect change to be part of. But when it comes to our family, we want constant. And the reality is that family can change. And that that's sometimes hard. This week, we're going to take a look at our chosen family. About what it looks like when our family chooses us or we choose our family. It's a different way of looking at it. How many of you have a best friend? Somebody who knows all your secrets. Somebody you spend all your free time with. Somebody you call when you're in trouble or feeling down. Someone you, who sees your family fight or invites themselves into your house and just eats your food. A friend like that? Well, sometimes they feel more like family, don't they? For the last few weeks, we've been in this series about family called FAM. And each week we've spent time talking about different things about our families that impact our lives for better or for worse. And while family is a really important thing to talk about, I know that for some of you, this whole series might feel just a little off. You've been here the last few weeks and all you've thought about is the fact that your family situation is different. For some of you, this is because you feel like you don't have the kind of family everyone else has. Maybe you only have one parent in your life. Maybe your dad's a mess and you aren't allowed to see, allowed to see him. Or your mom left and you have no idea where she is. Or maybe you're adopted. And even though that's awesome, you feel like it makes your family different. For others of you, you're struggling because the family you have isn't the family you want. You wish your mom didn't work all the time and that she spent more time with you. Or you wish your dad would care a little bit more about what's going on in your life. Maybe you wish your older siblings weren't so mean. Or maybe you wish you actually had siblings to begin with. Maybe your family is dealing with secrets people don't even know about. Things like addiction or abuse, cheating or divorce. And when you see families in your neighborhood or you go to your friends' houses, all you can think is, man, I wish my family was more like them. I kind of even wish they were my family. Or maybe you struggle to talk about family because you don't have one. Sure, you came from a family of some kind, but for whatever reason, you're not with them anymore. Maybe your parents passed away when you were younger, or maybe they got into trouble and they can't take care of you anymore. Maybe you've never met them at all. You've been in someone else's care for as long as you can remember. And because of any of those reasons, you live with an aunt or uncle or grandparents or neighbors or foster parents or friends. And even though you may have adults in your life who care about you, you still struggle because you know they aren't the fam you came from. They aren't the fam you thought you'd have, the kind everyone else seems to have. The truth is, talking about family can be hard, because for so many of us, family doesn't look the way we thought it would. We think other families are so perfect, or so much better, or have it all together. But for whatever reason, that's not the kind of family we got. And honestly, that can make us feel completely and totally alone. If you're feeling that way about your family situation right now, let me just stop and encourage you with this. You're not the only one. In fact, that's a feeling a lot of us have felt about our families, not just today, but even thousands of years ago. In the Bible, there's actually a story about two guys who were dealing with complicated family situations that I think can help us here. These two guys were named David and Jonathan, and neither of them had typical home lives. David didn't live with his family. He left them when he was called to work for Saul, the king of Israel. And who was Saul? 
Well, he was actually Jonathan's dad. And they lived and worked together. Jonathan and David became close friends. Now, at first, this was no big deal because Saul, Jonathan's dad, loved David. But over time, things changed. As king, Saul wanted to be seen as the greatest, most powerful, and most beloved leader in Israel. But David's popularity started to grow. And to make matters worse, God actually appointed David to be the next king, a plan that Saul didn't love. And as a result, Saul became to, began to hate David. He even made a plan to kill David. See what I mean? Both Jonathan and David were in family situations they didn't necessarily want or expect. David lived apart from his family, and Jonathan was dealing with a dad who was actually trying to murder his best friend. That might be enough to leave both guys feeling completely and totally alone. But you know what? Because they had each other, they didn't. These two guys formed a friendship that was more like a brotherhood. They were the kind of friends who helped each other out, stuck with each other no matter what, and protected each other. The kinds of friends that become family. The Bible describes their friendship like this. And Jonathan made a solemn pact with David because he loved him as he loved himself. I love the story of Jonathan and David for a lot of reasons. But the main one is because I think it shows us this. Sometimes friends are more like family. Like we said, not all families look the same. And sometimes, like for Jonathan and David, you find yourself in a situation where other people in your life feel more like family than the people you're actually related to. Your friends, their parents, a coach, or a teacher. Sometimes God puts people in our lives who act like family. Maybe you don't realize this, but that's even part of what we try to do each week here at church. We act as the family of God. We support and encourage each other because that's what God calls us to do. He created us to do life with each other like a family. Even when he was here on earth, Jesus had friends who would become like family to him. His disciples, the men who were his closest friends and followers, became the people he did everything with. They were as close as family. And as believers, they became part of the family of God. And this is the same thing God offers us. Whether it's the first time you've ever been here, or you've attended every single week, attended, you've been here with us on YouTube every single week, I want you to know that you have a family here. At OPC, we have people who will support, love, and encourage you. Maybe your family at home is awesome. Or maybe your family doesn't look the way you hoped it would. Maybe you have no family at all. No matter what your situation is, you have this family, the family of God, to walk with you through this life. Maybe you're sitting here thinking, yes, I know exactly who the people in my life are that love and treat me like family. I know who makes up my family outside of my family. If that's you, great. One of the best things you can do this week is let that person or people know that you appreciate them. Shoot them a text, write them a note, or give them a shout out online. Thank them for making you feel like fam. And let them know you want to do the same for them. You want to be their fam too. Or maybe you're sitting there thinking, that sounds really great. And I wish I had those people in my life. But honestly, I don't feel like I know who they are or where I find them. If that's you, then I'd say this. Bring more people into your circle. Do it safely, but bring more people into your circle. Think bigger than just the few people you have close to you right now. Think about who else is speaking 
positive things into your life. Someone older than you or close to you who you can trust. Maybe it's a teacher, a coach, or a friend's parent. Maybe there are a few people in your school who you know you can learn, lean on or trust to be your fam. Identify at least one person who you know could be like your family and include them in more parts of your life. Spend time with them. Ask them to hang out. Open up to them about what's going on in your life. I promise you that it's worth it because bringing more people into your life will expand your fam. And sometimes friends are more like family. One of the best parts about following Jesus is that we gain a family. The church can become like a second home, a place where we can be safe, heard, known, and loved. That's how God designed it to be. He knew that life wouldn't always be easy, that we would need each other, that we would need a fam. Here, we can be a place where you can belong and be loved, a place where you can find your fam. Because sometimes, friends are more like family. So as you go this week, I want you to think about this question. Who is a friend in your life that could become part of your family? Let's close in prayer. God, thank you for giving us resources for giving us the ability to be here together on YouTube. It's hard, it's different, it's not the way we wanted it, but God, I pray that you would lift each one of us up. You would help us each to find our fam. God, as we look forward to next week, I pray that you would bring us back safely, that you would help us to be mindful of who is in our fam. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, have an awesome week, and we'll see you next Sunday.